welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching a special interview-based program, To The Point. In this show, we bring to you a dynamic former judge of the Supreme Court, an innovative judge who found out way where there was none. He's presently occupying the position of the chairman of the press council, Justice Mark Andikach. Sir, Gopal Das was a pure innovation on your part. I mean, never had one thought that Gopal Das could ever be freed. And it all began by you making an appeal to the Supreme Court of Pakistan. How did that idea evolve? It evolved because uh, I thought 27 years in prison was long enough a time. He was uh, convicted on charge of spying. And on humanitarian ground, I thought that that's 27 years is long enough. Um, so uh, the problem was that I had no jurisdiction over Pakistan. I could only make an appeal, which could touch the hearts of the authorities in Pakistan. So I began with an Urdu couplet from the great Urdu poet Faiz Ahmed Faiz, whose centenary we are celebrating this year. And I thought that uh, couplet, Khafas Udas hai, Yaron Saba se kush to kaho. Khafas means cage or prison. Udas hai, Yaron Saba means the morning breeze, kush to kaho. Kahi to beher e khuda. Beher e khuda means for God's sake. Aaj zikr e yaar chale. So perhaps, uh, and I asked the um, Solicitor General to uh, communicate copy of this order to the Pakistan High Commissioner in India and uh, I requested the High Commissioner to please forward it to the Pakistan government. And I must say, um, to the credit of the Pakistan President and Prime Minister, that they honoured my appeal and they released him. But the same could quid pro quo could not actually take place. Well, I have been... Uh, I, are you referring to Dr. Khalil Chishti? Yeah. Regarding Dr. Khalil Chishti, I have been making appeal after appeal. Because, see, the incident in which he was implicated took place in 1991, 20 years ago. He is not an ordinary man. He was a professor of virology in Karachi Medical College, a PhD from Edinburgh University, a very highly qualified man. He had come in 1991 to see his ailing mother in Ajmer. There some incident happened, and I'm not going to the merits of the incident, but uh, evidently there was some shooting and um, he was also implicated, rightly or wrongly, I'm not saying. But on the executive side, even if an appeal is pending, the president and governor have the right to grant pardon under the constitution. Article 72 gives the president the power to grant pardon and Article 161 grants the governor. I sent uh, letters to the prime minister, to the home minister, Mr. Chalambram, personal letters to the governor, all three of them appealing to them that, look, I'm not going into the merits of the case. The man is 80 years of age, he's a heart patient, he can hardly move. Why not uh, gra let him go. grant mercy? He, he's uh, got just a f short time to live. He, his family, is in, uh, wife and daughters are in Karachi. Why not exercise mercy just like the Pakistan government uh, exercised it and let him go? But I'm, I, I truly am sad. Pakistan government honoured my appeal. Indian government will not honour my appeal. It makes me very sad. So also you emphasised through your judgments how judiciary should keep away from taking the uh, role of the executive. Yes. But during the last few months of your judgment days, I mean when you were a judge, you actually took up an appeal that came from Bengal, expanded its horizon, it was a criminal appeal, and then you went on to set up a committee for rehabilitation of sex workers. Basically, this, it amounts to the same. So where is this contradiction coming from? I'll tell you, I don't think there's any contradiction. Ordinarily, judges should not encroach into the domain of the legislature or executive. But there are exceptions. In India, I'm told there are three million sex workers. And most of them are in the sex trade, not because they enjoy it, but because of terrible poverty. There's tremendous poverty in the country. Just to fill their stomachs, these young girls, they are they have to enter the sex trade, uh, trade to fill their stomachs. But aren't and, you taking the role of the executive in your hand? Well, uh, 
sometimes we do. Normally we should not. Sometimes we can. There are there can be exceptions because. See, the idea which occurred to me is that if we can give some technical training to these sex workers uh, by, and, and they can earn their bread through this technical skill instead of by selling their bodies, that may enable them to you know, escape from this um, horrible world in which they are living. So I said, let, let me try an experiment. I often tried experiments in my judicial career. Some experiments succeeded, some experiments failed. You don't you, you can't uh, term it as contradiction, can you? No, I said no, there's some, uh, normally we should not encroach into the domain of the legislature or executive. But sometimes, you know, just to push the executive forward. In this case, what did I do? I asked all the uh, government, state governments to submit schemes for rehabilitation. Of I did not make the schemes myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm just pushing them. Not legislating myself, not giving directions, other than asking them to uh, themselves take action. Because everybody under Article 21 of the Constitution, as interpreted by our Supreme Court, has the right to a life of dignity. Does it bother judicial activism? I said sometimes judicial activism is a good thing. It's not that every time it is a bad thing. It should not be ca carried to excesses. Judicial activism must be exercised in a balanced way in a, in, a, uh, uh, in certain situations. If you keep on, uh, judges start running schools, running hospitals, uh, doing building roads. No, see, this is not the job of a judge. Judges must not, uh, certain, uh, for example, um, um, I criticized one judgment of Supreme Court where it was said that, uh, where the Supreme Court fixed the speed limit of vehicles, uh, heavy vehicles in Delhi. So under the Motor Vehicles Act, it is for the, uh, the concerned authority to fix the speed limit of vehicles. Mm -hmm. There's a provision in the Motor Vehicles right, Act. Sir. Court can't take over their, their jurisdiction. So I said that this is not uh, permissible activism, but some activism we can do. One of the uh, uh, stories that we came through in our uh, thing was, uh, it was a case of minor rape and uh, you upheld the sentence to the uh, person who was accused but it was sort of a bargaining with him and uh, after the undertaking given by the victim you actually went ahead and said that okay we will adjust your sentence in the existing one if you compensate the victim for the torment you've caused her. Now, this was not even part of the plea. Where is this innovation coming from? What is the idea? See, in the uh, Indian Penal Code, Section 376, it is provide a certain minimum sentence for rape is given. At the same time, there's a proviso in Section 376 which says that the court can give less than the minim minimum sentence, but for reasons recorded in writing for special consideration. Now, here there were spe several special considerations. One is that this incident happened almost 20 years ago. That lady has got married with somebody, mm. not the uh, yeah. accused, got married with children. And all. She herself said, I'm not interested in sending this man to jail. He had, mind you, already suffered four years in jail. Yeah. It's not that he, was, he didn't undergo, undergo any sentence. He had already undergone five, four year sentence. And this uh, victim said that now, if I'm given some compensation, I have children to look after. If I can get some money, one or two lakhs or something, I'll be able to feed my children. What will I get by sending the man to jail? So when she come forward herself and so I said these are special circumstances. 20 years have elapsed. Now parties have come to a compromise. She is not interested in sending him to jail. Why? Uh, and he has undergone four years. So that is. Hmm. So these are special circumstances. So hmm. we reduced it to the sentence undergone which was four years. It's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will continue our conversation with Justice Mark and Welcome back. In conversation with Justice Mark and Dekarju. So, one of your very famous quotes something is rotten in Allahabad High Court. In the prevailing situation, where do you actually see rot in the judiciary? Uh. When I started law practice in 
سیونٹی دیر واز ہارڈلی اینی کرپشن ان دا جوڈیشری ٹوڈے انفارچونیٹلی دا سچویشن ہیز چینجڈ اینڈ وی ہیو ٹو ایڈمٹ اٹ آئی ایم ناٹ سینگ آل ججز آر کرپٹ دے مینی آؤٹ اسٹینڈنگ ججز ہو آر ویری اپ رائٹ اینڈ بیکاز آف دیم دا سسٹم از فنکشنگ دا پریزنٹ چیف جسٹس آف انڈیا از ویری اپ رائٹ وی آر ویری لکی وی ہیو سچ اے سچ این اپ رائٹ چیف جسٹس آف انڈیا بٹ دین دے آر ادرس اباؤٹ ہوم دیر از اے بگ کوشچن مارک اباؤٹ دا انٹیگریٹی سو اسٹینڈرڈس ہیو فالن جنرلی ان سوسائٹی اسٹینڈرڈس ہیو گون ڈاؤن بٹ بٹ وی ڈو کیپ اٹ گیو گیو می گریٹ پین ان سینگ اباؤٹ مائی پیرنٹ ہائی کورٹ دیر سم تھنگ از روٹن بٹ آئی سیڈ اٹ بیکاز آئی نو اباؤٹ از مائی پیرنٹ ہائی کورٹ آئی کیپ گیٹنگ انفارمیشن اباؤٹ اٹ فرام مائی فرینڈس دیر سو اٹ گیو می گریٹ پین ان اسپیکنگ لائک دس اباؤٹ مائی پیرنٹ ہائی کورٹ بٹ آئی ڈڈ ناٹ سی دیٹ ایوری تھنگ از روٹن ان الہ آباد ہائی کورٹ آئی سیڈ سم تھنگ از روٹن اینڈ دین آئی آلسو کلیریفائڈ اٹ ان دا ان دا سبسیکوینٹ آڈر دیٹ دے آر مینی ایکسلنٹ ججز بٹ دین دے آر سرٹن ادرز اباؤٹ ہو دے از اے بگ کوشچن مارک سر ہیو یو ٹرائی ٹو ایور ڈو سم تھنگ ٹو کریکٹ دیٹ فراڈ این انڈیویجول ایفرٹ سی مائی اپروچ از دیٹ وین آئی گیٹ ٹو نو اباؤٹ سم جج فار ایگزامپل ان مائی پیرنٹ ہائی کورٹ سم کمپلینٹس کمنگ آئی مائی سیلف ٹیلی فون ہیم ویری آف فون آئی ہیو ٹیلی فون ہیم دیٹ لوگ کمپلینٹس آر کمنگ دس از ناٹ پراپر پیپل ہولڈرس ان سچ ہائی رسپیکٹ وی شوڈ یو مائی بیٹر مینڈ یور ویز دے سیریس کمپلینٹس کمنگ اگینسٹ اینڈ آئی آف این ریپیٹیڈ سیورل ٹائمس آئی ٹرائی ٹو مائی اپروچ از لیٹس فرسٹ ٹرائی ٹو ریفارم پیپل ایٹی پرسینٹ پیپل کین بی ریفارمڈ ایون پیپل ہو بین ڈوئنگ رانگ تھنگ بٹ دین دے آر ففٹین ٹوینٹی پرسینٹ انکوریجبلس and against them action has been taken in which I, about whom I mentioned that in that case the Chief Justice should, rec- should recommend their transfer mm-hmm. to some other High Court. If you are just in court. But first I attempt to reform him. My approach is first try to improve the man. All of us are full of defects. All of us have made mistakes. Let's try to first make him a better man. So I tried as an elder brother, I have telephoned many of these judges about whom they were complaining. And look, these are complaints coming. This is not proper. You are holding such a high post. You should... Uh, ورک um, پراپرلی uh, and کمپلین شوڈ ناٹ کم ان ایکسٹریم کیسز دین آئی سیڈ دین چیف جسٹس شوڈ ٹیک ایکشن یو ایکسپٹیڈ سر دیٹ دیر از دیر از کرپشن دیر از اے سسٹم ان دا جوڈیشری فار اپائنٹمنٹ وچ از فیئرلی اٹامنس اٹ از ان دی ہینڈز آف دا جوڈیشری ڈو یو تھنک اٹ کین ریمین دیٹ وے اور ڈو وی نیڈ ٹو چینج دا See, I, uh, every institution is really the human personnel who are manning that institution. It is not a beautiful building which makes a high court or beautiful curtains or beautiful garden which makes a high court. If there's a lovely building, beautiful garden, but the judges inside them that are taking bribes, it is no high court. But if a man is sitting under a tree and dispensing high quality justice, that tree is a high court. So, so far as high courts are concerned much depends on the chief justice because he has tremendous powers if the chief justice is upright then ordinarily things will keep improving but if the something wrong with the chief justice then there's a big problem do you think there's something wrong with the way appointments are happening as i said that in appointment you see appointment of uh, um, uh, high court judges is Uh, done by uh, uh, is the recommendation is done by the uh, collegium of chief justice and two senior most judges now sometimes things happen which should not happen and wrong names are also recommended mm-hmm. now it again depends on the much depends on the chief justice it, he is determined that we must uh, send good names come what may then uh, good names will go But if he starts making compromises for some reason, then there will be a problem. Mm-hmm. So, uh, once again, it's the human personnel. You see, you may have any kind of system, but if the human personnel are not uh, of the high standard, the system won't work properly. Do you think it is time for any other independent agency to take over this role of the college? For But, betterment of the entire judiciary. Yes, I think, I think um, uh, this requires uh, uh, a change. 
because the system in our constitution see the language used is for example about appointment of supreme court judges the language of article 124 i think there's the provision mm -hmm. which says president of india will appoint a supreme court judge after consulting chief justice of india and such other judges of the supreme court or high court as he deems fit mm -hmm. now it's not limited to the first five mm -hmm. such other judge of supreme court and even he can even consult a high court judge because mm -hmm. supposing a high court judge is uh, proposed to be elevated to the supreme court mm -hmm. then his colleagues in the high court would be knowing about his reputation mm -hmm. so president of india can even consult the high court judge mm -hmm. but under the judges case the judgment in judges case all this this provision has become useless mm -hmm. now now a, a high court judge can't be consulted mm -hmm. now no other supreme court judge can be consulted except the first five mm -hmm. where is it mentioned in article 124 the, there is no mention of any collegium system this uh, i i think this is uh, 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 requires to be reconsidered because uh, the judiciary they cannot amend the law and particularly it can't amend the constitution this amounts to amending the constitution mm -hmm. Top five, you've been part of the top five, sir. No, I was the sixth number. I retired as number six. How does the top five operate, sir? I don't know. I uh, I was rarely consulted, except uh, the Chief Justice of India has a high opinion about me. He respects me, so he used to sometimes consult me. Otherwise, uh, see, uh, I think this system is defective. First five uh, don't consult even number six. Mm -hmm. When I was Chief Justice of Madras High Court. and uh, the judges case the collegium of high court is chief justice and two senior most judges i consulted one dozen sitting judges in order of seniority one dozen and i asked them to sub submit their suggestion their um, names whom they thought deserved to be elevated and i asked about uh, four or five very senior lawyers former um, advocate general and all to so at least 16 17 people i consulted and then the consensus which emerged you was i was recommended and almost all those names were accepted and those persons were appointed as madras high court judges i think that is the way it should be done not that five people alone sitting and even number 6 not knowing uh, what is happening so do you think uh, judges appointment judicial accountability bill bringing judiciary judiciary under rti whistle blower bringing judiciary under whistle blower bringing judiciary under lokpal is that the right way to go forward see uh, you have to preserve the independence of judiciary also you bring me under somebody and then uh, he will start asking me all sort of questions see you have to understand that uh, judges if they are to uh, to function properly must be uh, must have a certain degree of freedom otherwise they will not be able to function properly yes they should be accountable in a democracy everybody must be accountable because in a democracy it is the people who are supreme and all organs of the state whether legislature or executive or judiciary they are nothing but servants of the people so everybody is accountable nobody can say that i become a judge of supreme court or high court so i can do whatever i like that is not acceptable but how to maintain control this is a big problem how to maintain and show that accountability needs to be considered very carefully you know it's very easy to say that you give up this system adopt another system how are you sure that that other system will work properly mm -hmm. you have to be uh, are you in favor of bringing judge judiciary higher judiciary under lokpal i don't want to comment upon this because this this is a, a issue which is uh, uh, people are uh, it's become a very sensitive issue at present there are lots of things being discussed so i would not like to comment on this what about including judiciary in the whistle blower rti there is constant pressure on the judiciary to ensure that rti is implemented that some certain administrative functions See, of the rti is uh, while i uh, believe in freedom of, of information at the same time a balance has to be struck this rti is creating tremendous problems many departments i am told the officers are doing nothing except uh, attending to rti applications working of the department has stopped because whole day is spent in in attending to rti apply many people have told me 
You see, there must be a balance. Uh, of course, there must be a transparency. People should get information. But it doesn't mean that you fl uh, flood the department with RTI applications. Now the um, uh, department is doing nothing except at attending RTI applications and not doing its own job. I am told this is what is happening. RTI, you know, you must, everything must have a balance. Do you think it is crippling the way decisions are made in the... I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. Once I, you know, there's some RTI officer posted in the Supreme Court. I got a letter, some lady. I got a letter from her, within 24 hours you reply about some question. Reply to this query within 24 hours. When I got this letter, I, I, I thought this is, this, is, this is not done. If you want to ask me, sure I am always open, but then you should have sought an appointment with me. You should have come to my, uh, 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 that, sir, there is some query, come, can I come and meet you? She should have showed it to me and I would have told whatever she wants. But sending me a letter within 24 hours, you send a reply to this? Is this the way to address a Supreme Court judge? And God knows from which department she had come. And she's posted in the Supreme Court and she sent letter, she sent me a letter that within 24 hours you reply to this. What, what is this way of behaving? There must be some sophistication, some, some culture. You, just because you are an RTI officer, you can harass anybody. This is not acceptable. I'm sorry. So what I'm uh, saying was, do you think uh, it is crippling the way decisions are made in the government, judiciary and uh, legislature? I just answered you that, see, a, a certain de a degree of information can be given, but you have to strike a balance. Certain things, a certain amount of conf confidentiality has to be done. Otherwise, there cannot be freedom and candor of expression. Hmm. No officer will feel uh, uh, safe in expressing any opinion because everything, see, there has to be a balance. Yeah. Certain things uh, 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 can be revealed, certain things cannot be revealed. It's now time for us to head into a break. We will be back and continue our conversation with Justice Mark Endicott. Welcome back. In conversation with Justice Mark Andekarju. So, coming to the present uh, responsibility of yours, sir. Uh, you've been a media friendly judge through and through, but never actually appeared for an interview. This is your first interview. But regularly, all throughout that the media reported uh, your judgments, there was a constant flow of judgment from your office. You've always been very, very open with the media. And now, you are mandated to head the press council, which is as, a, as the chairman. Sir, how do you plan? Do you have a vision as to how to go ahead? Especially given the point that a large section of the media, which is electronic, is something which is not in your control. It's, it's very simple. See, uh, the lot of thinking in many quarters, not only in official quarters, but even ordinary people I have spoken to, they are feeling a concern that uh, the media, section of the media has become wayward, it has to be reined in, sometimes they, they, they don't care, they, they defame people, they go overboard, there's a think, certainly, certainly that thinking is. Now the point is, if there are defects in the media, including electronic media, the two ways of correcting the defects. One is the democratic way, which I believe in following. The other is the strong arm method of punishment by imposing heavy fines, by stopping government advertisements, by suspending the license, etc. I am a totally democratic person. Yes, I can use very tough measures. I can be very tough where toughness is required. Where sometimes uh, 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 tough measures, as you know, in my judgment, but that should be done in exceptional cases. Normally, we must, uh, uh, you know, resolve uh, in, the, in a democracy, issues are resolved by discussions, by consultation, by sitting together, talking to them. So, I have devised a method that every two, three months, I will interact with the media, including electronic media, even though it doesn't come under the Press Council Act. But is there any harm in talking with the electronic media? Well, people. Uh, mention about paid news, how this can be controlled, the various other issues. Uh, Any ideas how you can control paid news? I have no idea. I tell you, I have to learn. But 
I am confident that when I sit with people like you, not just once, on several occasions, we will find out a solution. This is, you see, in a, this is how things are resolved in a democracy, not by using danda. I, I, I am quite capable of using danda. Which is most pronounced in electronic media? Where do you think the real pronouncement of nothing is right, where you can say is absolutely right? Or see, uh, electronic media being more visual, you have to be more careful. You, you, uh, I can tell you in, in, in one judge of a high court, I will not name him, who is known to be an upright judge, on two consecutive days, he was shown on a reputed TV channel, I will not name the TV, uh, the TV channel, his photograph shown next to that of a notorious criminal. And the allegation was that he had grabbed some land. I personally made inquiries and I found that this was, and he was, he was weeping, he was about to resign. I personally made inquiries and I found, he gave me all the documents, he had bought the land in a rural area in the open market at the market price, he gave me all the documents. Now, just see, you, you uh, condemn a corrupt judge, I am all with you, I have myself done it. Should you condemn an upright and honest judge? How demoralizing it is. I mean, you have to sense, develop a sense of responsibility. It's not that somebody uh, tells you, oh, this judge has taken land and you publish his photograph next to that of a, uh, a renowned criminal. That's Are you it. ready to wield the danda, as you said? It, if I said in extreme situations. Normally, no. Normally, I, I believe in the democratic method of discussions, persuasion. Uh, we'll talk together. In extreme cases, yes, I'm quite capable of using the danda. But that's only, as I said, extreme cases. If, I mean, if you prove to, you know, you, you, you must understand, it. see, uh, you have to serve the people. If you are totally incorrigible, then what are you going to do? How long are people going to accept all this? You have to be... Uh, what is the level of regulation? The government has been planning and proposing several changes. The cabinet yesterday approved of several uh, other regulatory uh, systems. Do you... I mean, do you agree to it? Don't agree to it? How do you stand? Yes, sir. Look, I don't believe in these. It should be self-regulation. As I said, we in, in a democracy, we will regulate. We will sit together. We will ourselves devise them. I'm, I'm, every two, three months, we are going to sit together, including electronic media. We will ourselves devise. We are not children that we have to be told by somebody, do this, do that. Otherwise, we will give you one danda. This is not. Uh, there should be. Uh, it should be. Sir, in America, once you are a judge of the Supreme Court, you are always a judge. But in India, things are not like that. Immediately after you've, uh, you've retired from the Supreme Court, there is this reappointment uh, system which is in place. Do you think the system needs to be changed? See, every system has uh, its good points and bad points. Um, yes, this has to be considered because um, um, some of us, retired judges, are doing things which are most improper. In arbitrations, they deliberately prolong the arbitration and keep, uh, keep to earn more money. And some of them are former Chief Justice of India, they are doing all this. You see, everybody wants money. Who, who doesn't want money? But then uh, there must be a, a, some self-restraint. Some of them, you know, they carry on and on uh, for years arbitration deliberately to keep on making money. I was told in some American court, two opinions of uh, former Chief Justice of India were shown which were directly conflicting with each other. I mean, so there, are, there are allegations that the opinion is prepared by the some people and just given for the judge to sign, you sign it and you take so many lakh rupees. Now, is this proper? If this is correct, is this proper? Some of the retired judges are doing things which are most improper. Thank you very much for talking to Raj Sabha TV, sir. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Please. Pleasure.